To be perfectly honest, this was one of those ideas I randomly thought of and said, hey, that might make a good video someday. Originally, I was planning on doing this challenge the week after next, but then I realized that if I followed my schedule, I would have four weapon-restricted runs in a row. For variety's sake, I decided I'd do this challenge instead. That's enough blabber about behind-the-scenes nonsense, let's talk run details. As you can no doubt tell from the title, I plan on beating the game with old world items. Now when I say old world items, I don't mean pre-war items. An old world item, in my opinion, is anything that was invented by or present before the 1880s. By the way, this does mean I can't use stim packs at any point in this run. Last I checked, no history books mention them being used in the American Revolution. Alright, I think I've rambled on enough for one intro. Let's start the run. After loading into my special save file, I ran straight into the elevator in order to start modifying my character. I messed around a bit in the character creator and made what looks like my usual character just a bit more... something. For my specials, I went with the classic good at everything master of none, and as for my name, I just went with Wild Willy. It probably would have fit the run a bit better if I used Revolutionary Reginald, but sadly names can't be that long. Anyways, on to more important matters, by which I mean the Pip-Boy. Now, obviously the Pip-Boy goes against everything that this run stands for, but I'm not going to be doing the pit boy list run. I have plans to do that in the future, so I don't want to step on the toes of future videos. I will not be using Vats though, I feel like that would be fitting for the run. Anyways, I picked up my Pip-Boy and immediately failed the run, and left the vault. You want to know something funny? One of my favorite games got an update this Friday, and I was playing it for most of the day. Here's the thing, I write my script on Fridays. So this means that this video, well at least the rest of it, does not have a script. I apologize for this, but there's literally nothing I could do about it. Anyway, something I didn't forget to do was grab the I'm Special book from Sanctuary. You'd be surprised at how many times I forget that. Anyways, I did mess it up, I put a point in Strength instead of Luck, which is what I was supposed to do, so I didn't level up as much as I like to in Sanctuary, but that's okay, I'm not exactly fuming about that. Other than that, Sanctuary was about as basic as it can get, so I eventually started making my way to Concord. I did pick up Dog Meat at Red Rocket because I felt like it would work for this run. Anyways, inside Concord, I obviously had the Raiders to contend with. They are very difficult enemies, especially when you have your bare hands and very few points invested into strength. I was able to take one of them down, which actually gave me knuckle dusters, which was a huge improvement from my bare hands, and I was able to use those to clean up the rest of them. As I've mentioned many times before, the raiders inside are much weaker than the ones outside, so I was able to clean them up even faster. Now it's time for the Deathclaw. Okay, so the Deathclaw was a mess this time, and that's mainly due to the fact that usually I let it and the raiders hash it out, but sadly, the raiders weren't able to come through this time. Instead, they just got ripped to pieces. This left me with a very angry lizard trying to get in my hiding hole. I ended up having to run from the building I was hiding in in order to get it closer to Preston and hope he could deal with it. That's not that I didn't contribute. Actually, I had upgraded my knuckle dusters at some point and they did have blades on them. This meant I could stack bleed on the deathclaw, which was helpful, but it wasn't exactly the quickest method of taking it down. I did eventually take it down, and I talked to the Minutemen for a bit. I will be siding with them this time, so I figured I might as well get a move on some of their quests. After saving the folks at Concord, I decided to make my way to various settlements on the map and just mark them. I also did the first Minutemen quest, the one that has you run to Corvega assembly plant. The raiders there were pretty tough, but in the end of the day I picked up a few weapons that I didn't have for the first raiders, so I was able to take them out pretty easily. Something else I did during this time was I also went to a spot near Sanctuary where I was able to pick up a 44 Magnum. I don't think these were around back then, but it'll be sort of representing the type of pistol that was there around that time. It was actually a commenter that let me know this pistol was there, so it was nice to have in my inventory. Sadly, jumping ahead a bit, I only shot it once in the entire run. I may not have used the pistol too much in this run, but it did do wonders for my confidence, so much so that I made my way to Park Street Station to start taking care of the Triggerman. This is way earlier than I usually try and do this, but I figured since I'm not too restricted in this run, I should be able to do it. I'll tell you right now, that was a lie. The Triggerman seemed awfully tanky this time around, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it was because I was using knuckle dusters that were actually weaker than the rolling pin last time, or maybe it was because I optimized my build so poorly. Anyways, it doesn't really matter as I did still try and make my way through, and I did make it through. Also, has anyone else noticed this Triggerman who looks almost exactly like Benny? No, seriously, I was looking at him and comparing him to Benny from Fallout New Vegas, and he is eerily similar. His hair, his clothes, even his face. I'm not sure what's up with that. 
Anyways, that's enough about the fake Benny, let's move on to Dino. Now normally I like to talk about Dino because I like to laugh at the fact that he never sees me. This time he saw me. Yep, not only did my first shot, which was from a hardened hunting rifle, hit him in the head with a sneak critical, it wasn't enough to kill him and he saw me. I was so frustrated by this, I ran up to him and shot him with a 44 Magnum. Yes, he was the only person to die to a 44 Magnum this run. Still very, very upset by what happened with Dino, I made my way through the rest of the vault, killing Triggerman as I went. Obviously, Skinny is the biggest threat here, but this time he wasn't too bad. I still had two Molotov cocktails from the raiders I killed, and since I can technically use them, I did. They killed everybody in a single hit. I don't usually use Molotov cocktails as they are kind of useless, but this time they weren't. Still reeling from the effectiveness of the Molotov cocktails, I briefly chatted with Nick and made my way to the Far Harbor DLC. If you're wondering why, it's because I need an upgrade for my rifle because I quickly realized the hunting rifle isn't going to cut it. Getting into the DLC wasn't too special this time around, the only thing worth noting was a random cat managed to make it into the boat and started glitching like crazy. I tried to record it, but sadly it spaghettied out of existence before I could. When I got to Far Harbor, I stared at the townsfolk fight off some gulpers before making my way to the vendor and buying a lever action rifle. Currently it's worse than my hunting rifle, but still, once I get a few upgrades for it, it'll make a much better rifle. Now, although this rifle is pretty good, it's not the best rifle I can get. Technically, the best one I could get is a legendary version of this, so I'm going to be working towards that. The thing about the legendary version, Old Reliable, which has a two-shot effect by the way, effectively doubling its damage, is that it needs a lot of caps in order to get it. I currently don't have a lot of caps or a way to make a lot of caps. One way to make a lot of caps though in this game is Diamond City Blues. I know I'm doing this video in a very odd order, but bear with me. Now when you do Diamond City Blues, you get a whole lot of drugs. But the thing is, I actually can't use any chems this video because of the rules of the run. So, these are effectively just free caps for me. The quest isn't brutally hard, so I was able to make my way through it pretty quickly. When I did get the goods, I just made my way back to Far Harbor and started selling drugs to every merchant in the area. For some reason the merchant that sells the rifle won't accept chems so I just had to sell them to everyone else. Now the person who sells you the rifle is a synth in Acadia so I did have to make my way there, but luckily that just had me scale a few mountains and I was there in a second. Now that I have a pretty good upgrade for my rifle, I figured it's about time I get an upgrade for my melee weapons. The best weapon I can think of for this run would be a revolutionary sword. Now I'm not very sure on how you'd go about getting one normally, so I'm just going to go for Shem Drown Sword, which is just the legendary version of one. Now in order to get the sword, you need to open up one of the detective cases in Valentine's office, which was simple since I already freed Valentine. When I did go to the location it pointed me to, it was swarmed with super mutants. I can handle super mutants, especially with a melee weapon or something like that, I could take them down pretty easily. I cannot handle four super mutant suiciders chasing me throughout the entire building. Sure enough, as soon as I entered the building, I was getting swarmed by suiciders and I just had to run like there was no tomorrow. I eventually did make it through and I was able to get through the door to the top. Guess who was waiting for me at the top? If you guessed Super Mutant Suiciders, you were right. I got blown up so many times up there. I actually got soft locked in there, whereas I kept getting blown up and blown up and blown up. Eventually I was able to use my pit boy to sort of slow down time and run away from the suiciders before they blew up, and I was barely able to survive. And I did all of this just to get a revolutionary sword, which is not that good of an upgrade. Anyways, it does fit the aesthetic pretty well, so I am sort of happy with this, and it's time to move on from here before I lose my mind. Well, the fun doesn't stop here, as my next goal is getting all the settlements I need for the Minutemen. Luckily, the Minutemen can be the fastest ending in the game just by doing settlements in the proper order, and thankfully I was able to do this this time. I ended up getting the settlements pretty quickly, and when I got about 6, Preston told me it was time to take the castle. Now, when I got to the castle, I noticed the Mire Lurks were really, really tough. I wasn't really sure what was causing this because I checked my game mode and I was still on hard mode like usual, but since this is me we were talking about, I ended up bumping it up to very hard to see what would happen. This is what I like to call the dark ages of video after this. You'll see why. The boost in the Mirelurk's power wasn't exactly too noticeable right now, so I just made my way through killing as many as possible. When the queen finally showed her ugly head, I started firing. 
Normally this fight isn't too bad because you could use a medex to boost your poison resistance so high that its attacks are pretty much meaningless, but sadly I can't use medex this playthrough. Need I remind you, the only thing protecting me from this thing's poison is Preston's coat. Yes, this is all I've been wearing this entire run. Oh my god, this was a mess. It only took one of the Myrlurg Queen's god power spitballs to land on me in order to kill me. I ended up having to run around the castle and just pray that they don't hit me as I took pot shots at the queen. Eventually, this mixed with the Minutemen's interference was enough to knock her down, claiming me the victory. Sadly, it was only a little victory as I still need to do more settlement quests, but I'll take it. The good news is I actually only need one more settlement quest, so it was a pretty brief trip all things considered. When I got to the first settlement I needed to go to, the settler there told me, and I quote, it's a pretty nice settlement, except something nasty has hold up there. Something nasty. Something nasty. Something nasty. I am sorry, but when someone says something nasty, I picture a cockroach, not the entire cast list of a Resident Evil game. When I got there, so many ghouls rushed me that I was genuinely afraid for my life, and I'm not talking about my life in game. The only strategy I could employ here was run away and throw as many Molotovs as I can, or else die. Thankfully this worked, but let me remind you I upped my difficulty up to very hard, which means it takes about 4 or 5 Molotovs to take a single ghoul down. I lost so much stuff while I was here, just resources, I burned it. I don't want to think about it anymore. Let's move on. The good news is, as I mentioned, this was my last settlement quest, so I was able to move on from here. When I did report back to Preston, he gave me the Old Guns quest, meaning I have progressed in the Minutemen storyline. Now, Old Guns isn't that hard of a quest, basically you just have to go through the castle's tunnels and deal with a sentry bot that's inside before building some artillery. Not that hard. Not that hard, except you have to fight a sentry bot with a lever action rifle and a revolutionary sword. Okay, maybe I'm over-exaggerating that, but the fight with Sarge was pretty brutal. I did make it through him, and I actually got a pretty decent reward after it. The Minutemen General's Armor. I'm not sure if you'd consider this cheating or not, because it does have what looks to be combat armor inside, but I'm going to go ahead and count it. It was either this or Ballistic Fiber, but my brain can't take the railroad right now, so I'm just going to go with this. Now, I could technically use the artillery as well, but I never really used it as it is pretty expensive to make enough of them to actually, well, you know, use them. But I don't think it is cheating that I threw the artillery grenade for once, just because I felt like it was, well, it was kind of fair. Because there was artillery back then. Anyways, the most important thing I got out of this was obviously the Minuteman General's armor, because I finally had some energy resistance, meaning I was finally comfortable enough to make my way to Fort Hagen. I had already done all the work leading up to Fort Hagen in Diamond City when I was picking up the detective case, so I basically just had to head to, well, Fort Hagen. Now the synths inside the building were pretty tough, I mean they were my first encounter with synths. Now while 80 energy protection is pretty good, and very hard that means very very little, and I ended up getting killed by them multiple times. Thankfully the lever action rifle I had is a, actually a really good gun, so I was able to take them down before they could do any real damage. When I actually made it to the big cereal man, I was ready for the fight of my life. Sadly, I was disappointed. I was able to take the synths down in his room pretty quickly just because they weren't too special, they weren't like a patroller or anything like that, they were just regular run-of-the-mill synths. And when it came to the fight with Kellogg, well, I disarmed him pretty quickly with my revolutionary sword. Here's the thing, after I disarmed him, he decided to pistol whip my dog. No one pistol whips my dog, so I picked up his pistol and pistol whipped him with it. Kellogg couldn't handle the irony of this, so he just dropped dead. I then picked up his brain chip, as I was going to most definitely need that later. Well, you know what they say, all work and no play, all that good stuff, I'm going to go kill the railroad. Now, it turns out very hard mode doesn't just boost the common enemy's strength and health, it also boosts named NPC's health and strength. This means it was very easy for the railroad to quickly turn me into a block of Swiss cheese, which made me very, very sad. This was the final straw for me, so I ended up sucking up my pride and downing the difficulty. I applaud anyone who genuinely does challenge modes like this, 
I mean, very hard is so brutal, I can only imagine survival. Anyways, the drop difficulty allowed me to take out the railroad with ease, which made me happy. I didn't really have anything else to do here, so I ended up just heading back to the memory den to start progressing the story even further. When I got to Good Neighbor, I just sped through all the crap I had to do in the memory den before mentally preparing myself for the glowing sea. Now normally when I go through the glowing sea, I use either a hazmat suit or a load of radix to avoid the radiation. Neither of these are an option for this run, so I'm just going to have to go in there with no radiation protection at all. The glowing sea isn't as bad as it sounds, it only has about 6 passive rads per second, which although is dangerous, it isn't the worst place you could be. The most important thing I just had to stick to was avoid any sort of combat. Normally I'd stop by the children of Adam and bully them to death, but sadly that really wasn't an option this time just because a single one of their shots would remove half my health bar. Luckily all the enemies are pretty spread out in the glowing sea, so I was able to dodge everyone and make it to Virgil's cave. Inside the cave there are no rads, so there's nothing for me to worry about, so I had a chat with Virgil and then made my way to Green Tech. Green Tech is easily one of my favorite places in Fallout 4. I had so much fun in this section just because the gunners, no matter what weapon you have, whether it be rolling pin, sniper, shotgun, it doesn't matter, they're gonna die to it. They seemed particularly susceptible to the lever action rifle and I was able to make my way in through there, pretty much destroying everything in my path. When I got to the courser, even though it's supposed to be one of the hardest boss fights in the game, I just pulled out my knuckles and started punching them, and I'm not even talking about my brass knuckles either. I actually find that punching the courser is a lot easier than any other way of killing it, other than one-shotting it of course, simply because the courser tends to get stunlocked when you are punching it, so you can destroy him pretty quickly without having to put too much effort. Eventually the courser did give up and just plop dead, so I was able to pick up the second brain chip this run and get it decoded by the railroad. This is corpses. The railroad's corpses. After I got the brain chip decoded, I didn't actually want to build the relay because I wanted to do a few side quests. I didn't actually do any side quests, instead I made my way to Far Harbor and kind of just wandered around the map for a little while. I didn't really do much else here except top up on my rounds and then I ended up making my way back to the commonwealth. When I got back I actually decided to finally do some side quests, by which I mean I did the Cabot questline. I usually do this quest in a video just because it's a pretty easy one and you get tons of gear, but I didn't really do it for that this time, mainly I was there for the caps. The first quests are incredibly simple, especially when you've done them multiple times, so I'll just skip to the last quest as usual. The last quest just involves more raider shooting, which I mean I'm not mad about, this is Fallout 4 so it is pretty fun to shoot raiders, but it isn't the most unique of quests. When I got to the final part with Lorenzo I decided to side with him this time and free him, and go and murder the Cabots. They weren't too happy about this, but they can't really say much now that they're dead. That's enough procrastinating for now, I think it's time to go into the Institute. Building the relay wasn't too tough this time considering I had every material I needed, so I was able to build it within seconds. When Sturges finally told me to step on the platform, I didn't listen instead stepped somewhat sideways on the platform, but it seemed to work out fine anyways. Inside the Institute, I just went with what was supposed to be my usual, you know, go in, talk to Sean for a bit, he lets me inside the Institute, and I go on a rampage. This was going well until, oh no, this is back. Yeah, the synth glitch was back, and for some reason there were thousands of synth patrollers in the upstairs room. I can do literally nothing about this considering I have a lever action rifle and a revolutionary sword, so unfortunately I wasn't able to kill the institute this time. I usually like doing that because it's a good way of getting lots of caps in gear, but like I said, it's just not going to happen this time. Instead I just shot Sean on sight and then left, which let me get through, but without the XP. When I got to Sanctuary, Preston told me we needed more settlements before immediately telling me we needed less settlements. By that I mean it's time to defend the castle, and oh boy is this a hard one. Defending the castle is easily the hardest part of Fallout 4 if you're doing pretty much any ending, so I was prepared for the worst this time. I was actually surprisingly well off since I had a few extra materials to build some turrets, a couple of those being missile turrets. This didn't mean a lot when in the first two seconds a couple coursers just blew the generators up anyways, so I didn't really have much support from turrets. Surprisingly, the settlement building system ended up helping me through here as I was able to build a couple of walls that would block line of sight for the coursers, which would let me run away. In the end of the day, it ended up coming down to the fact on whether or not I had enough resources to take them down, and I did, but in sort of an odd way. What I ended up doing is running away halfway through the fight as every good general does, and getting a few extra parts. 
when I came back, I just put my generators back together and watched the missile turrets absolutely destroy everything in the area. I'm not kidding, every Corsair I was struggling to kill just got eviscerated in a couple seconds. The Minutemen weren't very happy that they got attacked, so it was time to bomb the Institute. The final fight with the Institute pales in comparison with defending the castle, so I really don't have much to say on this. I did encounter a couple odd things, like this time in the main room I did see a couple unique synths, which was weird as I usually only see them in the reactor room, but they weren't that tough and I was able to actually take them down pretty easily. By now my lever action rifle is doing about 200 damage, so I'm not exactly worried about going down to synths. The real problem here was that I forgot to heal my radiation at a doctor, meaning I was literally stuck with a pretty high amount of rads pretty early on. This didn't mean much in the reactor room however, as I was pretty much going to die if I stayed in there for too long. The trick ended up being to take down the synths from a distance inside the room right outside the reactor, before running in and placing the pulse charge on the reactor before running. I was then teleported out, only to see Robot Sean, which I just told to die as usual, I don't really like him, and was teleported out. I then pressed the big red button, proving no, you can't beat Fallout 4 with old world items. Yeah, this video is technically a fail, seeing as there were multiple instances where I had to pick up items that weren't deemed fit for the run, so it is a shame, but yes, this is a fail. I still wanted to see this run through though, so I ended up playing till the end. Regardless, that is all I have for today's video. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.